Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Holyfield and I'm a professional dance choreographer and dance educator based out of the Southeast of the United States and we are taking a look at La 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 La, the music video and the behind the scenes of the dance practice for this. So, fun fact, this particular track was the very first Stray Kids analysis I ever did, I believe. And I am so bittersweet about it because that means that I'm getting really close to the end of my marathon with them. And at this point, I've looked at well over a hundred different pieces of content and material over the past month, which is a lot of Stray Kids and a lot of time spent in this chair looking at their movement quality, their production. It's just, it's, a, it's really hard to believe. So um, I am very excited for this, but also I'm a little sad that oh we're, we're getting close to the end so but it's okay it's nice to be caught up and with the times with everybody else so can't wait to check it out let's get started they got some pirate vibes going on here Fun. I love the underwater filters they add to this. A lot of clowns. Remind me of Circus. Looks like Groot right there. Nice. Dope. It feels it ties into God's menu and some of the syncopation. Woo! Yeah. Put a lock. Did they just do a lock on the word lock? Oh, cool. A little school bus. Do the freeze frame of that sick. Wow, oh, there's your little dimension choice right there, isn't it? They're looking up, they're looking at the drummer boys, literally. Oh, that's so cool, one, two, three, four, five, there's eight of them, oh, that's really cool. So I'm assuming those 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 little drummers are the, the equivalents of Stray Kids, but in a different dimension, maybe? Oh, like, I'm not gonna lie, I got a smidgen teary-eyed, and this has nothing to do with like why would why would I cry or get that emotional. It is sincerely because I really I let me verify this before I complete my statement. Hold on. So la 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 la, this was the very first reaction I ever did to Stray Kids. So it like it does feel the most full circle to me from my first taste of their movement quality and production to to now knowing what I know. It kind of feels like, you know, whenever somebody gets amnesia and then they get all their memories back, it feels like that. <laughs> like the closest thing I can relate to that for never experiencing it. 
Um, I absolutely loved that. The visual was so cool. It definitely feels elevated in the music video production. I still think my favorite, I mean, of course, there's still a Megaverse and like maybe one other, but um, I really like how Circus was formatted um, just in the music video production side. It was so fascinating. I really like this. It does remind me of a lot of the trend of how music videos are filmed nowadays, you know, like with like crazy form and uh, quite a few others, like some of the boys more, well, not not really the boys I think theirs was Nectar was the most recent one that I had taken a look at at this point in time um and it, it was definitely more like uh like real world reality based district 325 three, five. so it's not district 9 six, seven, eight, ten, three, four, five. yeah 325 that means something doesn't it Anyway, but I, I like the bus. It kind of feels like we're reclaiming, like, our older era selves, right? Or we're using the bus. It's a different district because they did use District 9. Oh, there's a lot of Easter eggs I feel like I'm uncovering, maybe. Or maybe I'm over-reading into it. But with music videos, it's, it's better, safer to just go for it, right? So I like the little drummers. They look like they showcase some sense of anxiety. I kind of feel like this sense right here, this la, 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 it does remind me of the blade that you would use for God's menu. I love the buildup here. It's so cool. They, they're giving, like, you got clowns with the bus. You got pirates. He looks like a freaking, we're in Descendants, the movie. Does that make sense? I love it. And then we're going to rock. The moves don't stop. So cool. It does remind me of Case, was it Case 143? No. Like, the music videos. They were on, like, this this little, not ship, but they were in the in the waters. And it was just a whole vibe in isolation. It was something that Changbin said. So, I don't know if you guys caught this. I didn't catch it until just now. Just enjoy it. That right there. Put a lock on your worry. So, what they did is a muscle man to a lock, which is in the style locking. This part right here. Put on a lock. You want to talk about like gimmicky choreo wordplay? That's one of the best you could do. I love that so much. The song like medicine. So it looks like they're captured. So it gives the fantasy vibes of what you notice in circus or you notice in some of the other ones where they have multiple versions of themselves. That's kind of feel like what we're dealing with. We're exploring the realm of multiple ver mega verses, you know, a multiverse here. And I know when their stray kids flicks, they, they start introducing that in more in a lore. Like they're introducing a lore that they've been doing low key this whole time. And so now going in, I know Megaverse is next on my list. It's going, I feel like it's going to be like an acid trip equivalence of this. I don't know. I really, really like this. There's probably so many things I miss, but I really like the fact I'm able to catch little things. Like it says district specifically on the side, that three, two, five. Uh, it's, I don't know what the 325 means, but I know that the district on the bus stems from their very early era of District 9. Are they pertaining to that realm? I don't know. I'm not good with lore, like keeping up with lores, but I love the fullness and I like the choreo. This right now, at this point of me recording, this is one of the front runners on my uh, Patreon poll because I do a poll at the end of my marathons of what choreography is to learn. So this is going to show up and this will get early release before all the other ones because I've done the dance analysis already so it's kind of out of order so yeah, I'm just letting you know I've seen over a hundred different pieces of material from Stray Kids at this point compared to the first time I watched La 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 which is so freaking dope and I know we have the behind the scenes to look at but I think this is just so cool completing my thought that I interrupted myself on I have a feeling I'm going to be learning this as well and I I like the choreo like I feel like I appreciate the choreo in a different way because I understand the fingerprints that make up it if that makes sense. Regardless if they have the same choreographers or not, it's still very admirable and it feels very on brand to them from debut until now, which is so impressive. So we're going to go here. We got, we got our uh, behind the scenes. Let's go ahead and watch it. <laughs> Oh wow. Two months? The slap. <laughs> Where is where you come in? That's funny. 
That's funny. That's funny. That was, that was petty. That was funny. Maybe it's your practice. Gosh, it's dope. Hyunjin! What have you done, dude? When do I turn? <laughs> no, for real. Very venomy right there. <laughs> Is the music video out at this point? I like how self-sufficient they are, kind of, when they learn choreo and then they come back to it a couple months later. Because it doesn't go that way uh, when we do choreography at the studio. We learn it over the summer and then we revisit it. It don't go this nice. <laughs> Should we stand closer? No. He's got his long hair back. Okay. Hey, I was born in October too. <laughs> The tackiest heart, love it. That did make me curious. Do they say that Bang Chun's birthday was in October? I'm curious about something. Please hold. Okay, Bang Chun was born October 3rd, 1997. I was born the end of October 1996. So I thought I was a month older. No, I am almost a year older than Bang Chan is. So I'm a nuna to all of them. Ha 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 ha. Moving on. I needed to satisfy that curiosity because I did say the wrong thing before. Changbin of Stray Kids. You two look like him. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> A Chinzy shot. That makes sense. I mean, the course will probably take about 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes to uh, for me to, to, to get. It's not too crazy. It's full out, but the choreo itself is not the hardest thing they've done. And I know you guys all know that, though. <laughs> Funny. It's just so interesting to me that I'm watching this knowing this is less than a year old. This is like really recent. That is crazy. 
It's the re reality is setting in for me right now. That part has become a meme for a lot of people. That mess right there. You notice how much cleaner this looks like this looks clean it's because it sat in their body for a long time because it said it's been two months since the music video <laughs> he's sweaty that's true he even sh that showed up in the artist of the month too he was sweaty in that but that's life it means he's working hard day two ready okay Literally what I do. No, not with the food. I mean, yes, I sometimes eat and dance at the same time. Not a recommend. You'll cramp up so bad. And a lot of times I just want to vomit whenever I eat too much. Da -da 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 -da. See, this is what I'm used to. Having somebody that's delegated as the cleaner. This They have a cleaner right there cleaning the dancers and stray kids. They're making, um, so if you don't know who that is, so whoever's like calling it out like that, they're, they're considered a cleaner. And that's what I do at a lot of studios is I'm in charge of the cleaning of the choreography, meaning that we make it to where it looks how it needs to look for whatever it's being used for. So for me, most of the time it's going to be for competitions. And so and synchronicity really, really matters. And I also go deeper and look at authenticity of the style that they are doing as well. If it's a street style of some kind or a hybrid of multiple street styles of choreo, I try to make the dancers understand what their posture needs to be going into it. So I'm definitely like a funnel, I take a fundamentalist approach when I clean choreo, but that's what that guy's doing in that room is what I do in my day to day. So I really relate to him. And for me, a, not a dream job, but like what, what would be so cool is to either sit in on a rehearsal like this and just watch and glean because it's it's different because the work is different like I'm used to a different scope of what these types of sessions are used for I'm not used to being in the room when the point is for like a performance or for to put it tuck it away for a concert tuck it away for something else it's more small scale right so for me that would be a really fun thing that I would want to do um is look is is be in the room for that you know would I ever want to be in a position where I'm telling like k-pop artists to do this that and the other I don't know enough Korean personally for me to feel comfortable enough to uh, approach it the way that I normally do but hey I ain't gonna I ain't gonna knock it unless I try it you know so that's just a little that's just saying that out in the world if that's something that ever pops up in my life I would totally try it because it's just so fascinating and I really like doing it just in my own neck of the woods but I digress my point being a cleaner is so important a lot of times if you want to up the if you want to up the competency collectively meaning that everybody how everybody's holding it down not just the dancers but the members too uh they're also the executive decision on a lot of things yes the members I, I'm gonna I have a feeling that the members get to like call shots on stuff but the cleaners the one who has to like look through the logistics of the choices and of the guidance if that makes sense they probably have uh, somebody or somebody above them that's like hey this is what we need to do this that the other you know or they can play multiple roles and I've done that as well so they're in charge of making sure everybody's on the same page for what it's being used for. In this context, I'm assuming it's prepping it for shows, it's prepping it for concerts, prepping it for a dance practice shoot because the music video's already taken place. And I'm assuming the format in which the choreography was taught, learned, and cleaned in the music video is different than what we're experiencing here. So I definitely am a really big fan of seeing this process because this is a very real, not glamorous part of cleaning or learning choreography, but having somebody there in this way, it makes sense why the choreo looks so freaking clean in the music video. And that it looks pretty clean in the dance practice um, that I saw. I didn't see the dance practice. It was the tomb version that I saw, but I still got to see it, got to appreciate it and enjoy it. But all that to say, shout out to the cleaner in the room. They are the true, they're one of the real ones of the reason why some of your groups uh, look as clean as they do on choreo. You need somebody like that. For sure. Unless you have somebody in the group doing it. Love it. Mm. Gosh. 
I would be yelling. I'd say more, more, but also different type of room. Different room, different environment. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to learn this. Not gonna lie. My Patreon's got good taste on what they vote for. That right there, that reminds me of Thunderous a little bit. That little swivel of the foot. That dig right there, I've seen on many things. Lock, gosh. Yee, okay, he didn't complete the wave, but it's fine. Yep. You know why you need a cleaner? Like I've said before, but I'll say it in a different way. It's because if you're in the routine, it's harder to see the big picture when you are in the routine. Even if you're looking at it from the mirror, it's not the same. That's funny. <laughs> Dope. Yeah, they're marking it. That's, that's funny. That was funny. Okay, I like how they're doing it in here more than the Studio Tune version. But that's just that's just me. I prefer when they're in the studio space doing it. And that music video is freaking dope too. Maybe I just don't like Studio Tune versions of stuff. And I've said that before, the more I watch them. Fighting. I appreciate the intention of the fingers. I think I saw that in the original analysis. I like it. He can't say nothing because he made a mistake for a dancer, too. I mean, that's exactly what the dancer did to him. <laughs> Funny. Funny. Yeah. Han. Yes, with the printouts. <laughs> that's cute. There's a washer. So they have to tape it. <laughs> so they're filming it in there for Studio Chum, I'm assuming, for how they need to film it. Yes. This is more for the blocking and how it needs to be shot, not really for the fullness of it. 
Yeah, because they're not going super full out, but just enough in this in the spacing, the staging. Ooh, that was oof. Um, but the formations, they have to make sure their spacing's in check in order for the shots to be as accurate as possible. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Sheesh. Did it do boom? Oh my god. I've that's happened to me, but the power went out. It's when I did advice by Taman. I got the shot, but right before it ended, right near the tail end when I was doing this, the power went the freak out. And it turned all the lights off. God, it was so annoying. Get it. Come on. They said hold it until the song restarts. Yep. Watch, oh, I always like to beat people up. <laughs> Let me talk about that. Okay, so there's two things that are happening at the same time, and I've talked about this in an ATs one, but I will talk about it here. So whenever you're in a dance practice space and you are rehearsing something, here's what happens to your brain. When you're practicing, let's say in a familiar type of attire, in a familiar setting, which in this case, they are always in this dance practice space, and they do end up going to a dance practice. A lot of times they go to one mill to film there because of the space. When they go to Studio Chum, it's gonna be a new environment, that kind of stuff. What happens to your brain is sometimes it kind of, you you start to space out or sometimes you, you become a little bit more forgetful of a lot of these details that you were fine in the space. That is something that happens. It's, it's uh, in neuroscience. They talk about that. It, and in psychology, they do talk about that as well. Um, but I, I can't, I can't address the like sp the specific terminology or vocabulary. So forgive me for that, but I did learn about this. So what they recommend, and this is what I also do when we clean choreo. Uh, whenever you're practicing in the same space for a long time, your your brain is going to environmentally like imprint on the space around you. So where if I transplant myself outside of the space, but I'm asked to do the same thing, but I never tried it outside of the space in which I practiced it, it's gonna be harder for me to maintain those details and that's why you rely more so on the muscle memory because that's what's gonna save you when your brain drops out. So for them, the smart thing is by turning away from the mirror, it resets the environment. And so it allows your body to know and get more from, get familiar with the movement more fully and getting it from short-term to long-term memory. Second thing is uh, not using the mirror. So you're not going to be so focused on looking at yourself for the cleaning process because a mirror is used to clean and to refine. It is not meant to judge. So never use a mirror to judge yourself. It is meant as a cleaning tool. It is a tool in a toolkit. It is not meant to define. It's not meant to validate either in the dance practice space. So if anybody tells you otherwise, 
it ain't true. So that's what we use mirrors for. And what ends up happening too is when you are trying to fix things, what ends up happening is you're going to subtly start isolating your head looking front because you're fixing things and you're looking to see if you fixed it. And so by turning away, it allows you to actually look where you need to look and commit to it. And that's also going to feel different than if you're subconsciously looking at the mirror the whole time. So there's two things getting knocked out at the same time by doing this. So I love that because like an actual performance, because it's been a hot minute, they've been practicing so far in this video facing the mirror, you know? So I'm all that to say, like, I'm very impressed at the fact that we're, I'm able to talk about it. I love the fact we're able to talk about it and I like that they're integrating it. They are doing some fantastic things here. They have a cleaner. They have, they're nice to each other. <laughs> you know, they're holding each other accountable. They're going full out. They're being intentional in their rehearsal, but they're not taking it so seriously that they're like pushing each other down or in that sense. And I, and I know they're not really like that, but in some cases, some people can really be critical of themselves and they can be critical of those around them um, depending on the type of performance it is. So I love the fact that everyone's in a more communal, vibe where they're like we know what we need to do we're professionals and this is our job like I appreciate people working hard at their job you know being an idol is a job but also it's very relational and I've talked about this so I'm very happy to see a lot of things that we see here this is a lot of stuff that you do see in the studio side especially on the competitive elite studios but across the board every studio I work at we do this if that makes sense when you're prepping for a performance doing this all the studios for recital season, we cover the mirrors up because it's going to really know, it's going to help you know if your dancers know that choreo. Because a lot of times you can use the mirror to cheat and look at those around you to remember the choreography. So that's another thing too. So I digress. Love the fact that they did that. That's so smart. So smart. You see that guy that was blurry and standing up on the couch? That's me, all the time. Always standing on something. That's so interesting that they played it in the mirror to remember. They could have just mirrored the video on the on the phone. Also not looking at the mirror. Nice. So fun. <sighs> it's tiring. It's tiring. Yes, for sure. It's very full out. Yeah, hard on the body. When it gets tough, smile. Baby bread. Is he known as, is he called baby bread? Is that what that, is that like a thing? Let me know that. But, um, I loved looking at this. I love looking at behind the scenes on dance practices. And I know a lot of you guys always recommend me looking at them because it does reveal like real, this is real world. Like this is real world stuff, regardless if you're an idol or not in the dance scene. When you're rehearsing in front of a mirror, you deal with stuff like this all the freaking time. I love the work ethic here. I love the intention and the seriousness of it, but also not so serious that it's like a like a competitive, how dare you like not pay attention for this one moment. You know, whenever you're dealing with like, uh, like a pre-professional program or uh, dancers who are school age, you do, they are children. So like you kind of have to, you know, uh, have a degree of like, not uh, what's the word like you it's it's a stricter environment because if you give them an inch they'll go a mile with it does that make sense like they don't have that society or like work-based uh toolkit refined yet that's the responsibility of the teacher which is what which is what i placate towards but this was so this was so fun so i thought for good old time's sake we could look at the dance practice because like I said I only saw the studio tune version and I did my analysis based off of that and the dance practice was not released yet at that time um and so I think if if y'all are up for it let's take a second look at seeing it in a dance practice form I'm gonna assume this is gonna be a fixed cam one take 
Oh man, full circle, here we go, from the top. One of our guys is a little off right there over on stage left. That was a beautiful peel though. God, that was gorgeous. Yeah, that was also a beautiful peel. A little ripple, love it. Basket runs, ugh, ugh, for a whole eight count. But I like how they got up, so whatever. <laughs> Hyunjin having like it's it's not he doesn't have what is it called a lanky body but his body is very thin and long but the degree of fullness that he has is so commendable that is so nice that whole section with Chamba was sick with Han too those are really really nice nice I love that choice that was good Cool. I mean, was there anything that, like, remotely stood out in the sense of, like, oh my gosh, we have to talk about it? I feel like I covered most of what I would say here back in the original, which, I mean, I, I would say, I think I made a note about the dancers and how there was a couple, like, a little too many mistakes. You do notice a mistake over here on stage left. Let me see if we can find it with one of my guys. But it was the only time I, like, really noticed it. Right here, so he's right, just look at this guy right here. That right there. And then, so he he technically forgot the, the four counts before this move progression right here, but that was the only time I caught anything super off. That's life, it happens, whatever, right? It's a dance practice. Also, I mean, if we're gonna compare what uh, the dance practice behind the scenes to this, I still prefer the takes, like what we saw in excerpt of the behind the scenes so much. Because, I don't know, it's just, there is something about being in the rehearsal space your best runs like being real more times than not a best run of a routine happens in the dance like in the dance studio space in which you learned it that's just that's like for me I see that all the time I experience it for myself the, some of the best runs happen in that way um I'm trying to think I mean yes there's adrenaline that that comes in whenever you're on stage some people forget some people don't forget some people are too critical of themselves some people are like on cloud nine you know but 
in the dance practice space, there's a sense of safety in the environment, or there is this, uh, there is um, hostility, depending on, honestly, it's the responsibility of whoever's in charge, uh, people that would be in my position, um, we have that responsibility of, we set up the environment in which the room is going to be. For me, in my case, my dancers and the routines in which I clean for them or that I choreograph for them, their best takes will probably be in the dance practice spot because I set an environment or I try to, to where it's safe to fail and it's safe to feel how you feel that day because a lot of times it's is one of the many toxic traits of the studio scene from personal lived experience but also seeing other colleagues participate in this and colleagues call it out uh, is a lot of times there's this like really um, strict environment that is set up in the space because that's what's going to lead to productivity. I think there's a hybrid and a meet in the middle on that. Empathy of your dancers for where they are and they may not feel at their best that day, but also knowing that we have an expectation. We have a job that you chose to sign up for. In this case with Stray Kids and with the dancers, dancers signed up for it. They said, yes, we'll do it. Stray Kids are like, yes, we'll do this. You know, they signed up to be idols, right? Like they made the choice to do it and they to continue on to be idols, right? And so my point stands of, I appreciate the fact that in the space, they're able to, they have a safe enough environment that they've cultivated for themselves to fail, but also to succeed and to work hard and to persevere and to kind of know that with each other. I really love that. And that's the beauty of working with the same people for a long time. That's why I work for the same studios for as long as I have, because I'm treated with respect. I'm allowed to hold my curriculum the way that I am, I want. Um, and uh, there's a mutual two-way relationship between my dancers and myself. So all that to say, I really love the fact that in this dance practice, I mean, they're pretty consistent across the board from the studio tune to the music video to this. I think the music video was freaking, it went so ham. There's a lot of unison in this beginning in the verse with a couple of, you know, breakaways. The basket runs, I always think we could have more opportunity to expand on and be more creative. But I also will stand by this just like, I don't know if I talked about it back then. It was a long time ago. Um... I really do feel, though, that it's all about the turnaround time. It's all about how long you have to work on something. In this case, they filmed the music video. They had to revisit it for the dance practice. They worked with the dancers. So they did have a tight turnaround time, um, but they probably had other things that they were doing at the same time as well. And we have to factor that in, too. But, I mean, in general, I don't, I don't really have any anything to say here that's different outside of what I was saying while we were watching it together. Uh, there was one moment I think that I really liked. It had Bang Chan's moment. This part is really cool. Da -da -da -da. Really nice seeing that there. I like that part. I think it was, I think it was after that though. Was it? This. I love this part right here. Oh, the pull up and the drag was really nice. And then they took the the level and they extended it up. I really like that part. That looks really cool in the full cam shot. Um, but in general, I really like this. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, Hyunjin makes a valid point. It's tough. But the reason why it's tough is probably because of how full out this is. This just gives heavy, heavy all of this right here, you got to lock up your core and your torso in order to make that work and make it full. You can see with Lino, when you see him going into the first course, he is taking a breath of, okay, here we go. First course, here we go. Let me see. Beauty of the bleed throughs is cool. So watch Lino, please. He's over here. Deep breath coming in. Ready? Watch. That right there. That right there is I need to pace myself for the rest of this routine. I do that a lot. Yay for the fact that they are knowing that they need to breathe because you have to breathe in order to maintain your stamina. Because if you hold your breath, your muscles are not going to get oxygen and you're going to fatigue out way faster. So that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't think I need to do a full analysis again. I kind of just, just like a basic overview. I mean, my general notes, I think the camera really helped on a lot of these choices. Studio Choom definitely showcased different visuals with this. Uh, th that would be, you know, this routine is not meant for to be viewed at as a one take full cam shot like this. I mean, unless you're at a concert, but even then when people go to a concert, they're not there just to look at the dance and the cleanliness of it. They're 
there for Stray Kids. They're there for the performance and for 15 to 25 different songs. This is one of many. So in this case, this is a outlier kind of video we're looking at. This is not the main context as to why the routine exists the way that it was structured. So I've learned to be more empathetic and more gracious towards even if I think something's too unison in my personal preference, it doesn't mean that it discounts or discredits the beauty of what the choreo is. I think it's very fitting for what it needs to be for what it's being used for. So all that to say, I like it and I'm so glad that I'm able to look at it with this lens now in comparison to the first time I looked at it. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch. This is getting released way sooner than all the other Stray Kids videos and I believe my Megaverse one will also get released simply because I've already done dance analysis of those. Um, and they're not technically my finales of the marathon, so hence why I'm okay with letting them go into the World Wide Web. But like I've mentioned, I have taken a look at debut up until this point of me releasing this video. So I've had so much to look at. I'm talking about the Stray Kids film, all of the routines, all of your favorite dance breaks, crazy routines that are very complex. I've seen them, I've done an analysis of them. Look at the music video, Carlos agrees. You know what I mean? So if, if you want in on that, I got it on Patreon ready for you. And when Stray Kids has comebacks, that's when the older reactions will start coming out. At this point, we, I think we plan on releasing around three per comeback of a special video, of a music video, or just a visual that pertains to a track of theirs. It's not limited to titles or albums or anything like that. So Stray Kids does release a lot, which means we are gonna get a lot of Stray Kids content on YouTube and always a shorter amount of time compared to other groups, which is really cool. Once again, my name is Jess. I will catch you on the flip side. Bye.